September 1942. You are falling through the freezing air over Nazi-occupied Europe. When your boots hit the mud, you are one of the deadliest soldiers alive. But you have a fatal weakness. You are slow, the enemy has panzers, you have legs. In the first critical hour of an invasion, if you can't move, you die. To save you, British intelligence gave engineers a suicide mission. Build a fully motorized motorcycle that fits inside a steel tube, only 15 inches wide. We need to reduce the Welcome to Station 9, the, the secret toy shop of the SOE. The constraint was absolute. The bike had to fit inside a standard 50-inch parachute canister. It was a geometry nightmare. They stripped the suspension, they removed the lights, they used a tiny 98cc engine and a frame that collapsed in on itself. They called it the well bike. And in testing, it was a miracle. A paratrooper could crack the canister, unfold the handlebars, lock the seat, and kickstart the engine in exactly 11 seconds. 11 seconds to go from a sitting duck to a 30 mile per hour assault unit. It was brilliant. It was revolutionary. Thousands were crated up for the invasion of Sicily and Normandy. But the engineers forgot one thing. The battlefield isn't a laboratory. On D-Day, the miracle machine met its match. Physics. The canisters were dropped miles away from the soldiers. Those who actually found them realized the tiny 10-inch wheels, designed for runways, sank instantly into the beach sand and mud. The impossible motorcycle became a 70-pound anchor. Elite commandos were forced to abandon them in ditches to fight on foot. Tactically, it was a total failure. But the idea didn't die. After the war, the design was repainted and sold as the Corgi Scooter, becoming the grandfather of every urban motorbike we see today. The Wellbike couldn't win the war, but it proved a powerful lesson. Sometimes the most brilliant failures are just inventions waiting for the right time.